Well, there's the IRS mess, right? But the press is saying, is all but saying that the budget itself is fixed. I want you to check out these headlines. The media crowing about June's $116 billion surplus. And while that is the biggest surplus in five years, let's face it, taxes are way up, and that's one of the things that helped to drive the surplus up. Cato's Dan Mitchell is worried that this is going to give the administration ammunition to hike taxes even more. Dan. I'm very concerned because anytime there's more revenue in Washington, whether it's the result of a tax hike or even if it's the result of economic growth, what do politicians do with additional revenue? They spend it. Uh, it's like giving alcoholics the keys to a liquor store. And we have a combination <laughs> of two things happening. Obama's getting a bit more money from the fiscal cliff, not as much as he thought because of the Laffer curve, of course. But mostly the economy, even though it's a very weak recovery by historical standards, we are getting a little bit of additional job growth every month, a little bit of additional economic growth. And that spins off revenue to the government and the politicians. It's like, wow, we're getting free candy. And you know, here's the thing, you know, the media kind of reports this and it gives the implication that, hey, maybe, uh, maybe the way to go is to just sort of spend willy-nilly. Uh, maybe the way to go is to raise taxes. So, and I, the public, when the president steps up to the podium again, wherever he is, I haven't seen him in a while, when he says, hey, we need to continue with this policy of hiking taxes on the so-called rich, maybe he'll get the public behind him. Two things. First, there's a point at which you keep raising taxes so much that you don't collect any more revenue. That's the Laffer curve. We've seen that in California. We're seeing that in some of these European countries. But Dan, let countries. me cut you off one second because California is actually saying the same thing. Hey, we've got a surplus. Uh, Governor Brown's a genius. This policy works. So what I'm saying is but, that but, I, you, you understand the Laffer curve. A lot of people watching this show don't. Maybe we have to hit it and get those law of diminishing returns before there's a general epiphany. Well, what's happened in California is actually a great example. When California voters approved that Prop 30 last November, they imposed a tax increase retroactive to January 1st. Now, if you're taxing people on income they already earn, there's not a big Laffer curve effect. The, where California is going to get in trouble is that a lot of rich people are now going to be moving out of the state. And so when they try to collect more money for this year and next year, that's when they're going to find, just like with France's 75 percent tax rate under that crazy President Hollande, California politicians are going to find, well, gee, where's the money? Right. And, and, and not only that, but even if they collected more money, because the Laffer curve doesn't say you automatically lose money. It simply says that you don't collect as much as you think you're going to collect. And in some rare cases, you lose money. The point is, if they get more money, they're just going to spend more. And that's why I have a simple golden rule. The private sector should grow faster than the government. What does that mean? control the growth of government spending. That's the only fiscal variable at the end right. of the day that really and, matters. And, and we see that in Europe. And to your point, we should note, uh, spending in June was uh, $170 billion by our government, the lowest since November of 2004. And that might be the silver lining in all of this news uh, right now. Dan, have a great weekend, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you.